Greetings everyone, Eric here, and welcome back to another video. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the Bagheera Power Soak. And this video is sponsored once again by Shopabunda. Buying products on Amazon, but finding it hard to afford the upfront costs? Shopabunda lets you split the bill up into payments on your purchases, thus helping you stretch out your money but still get the items you need. Payment plans come in multiple options depending on the price, uh, starting with a no interest four month plan and can go all the way up to 24 month plans if the purchase is at a higher price. Check the link in the description to start breaking up your payments today. The Bagheera PS1 Power Soak is a guitar amp attenuator. This means that it basically can simulate the impedance from a cabinet to your tube amp. Now, if you want to know more about why it's important to plug your tube amp into a speaker cabinet or an attenuator, I'm going to leave a link in the description down below to a video. Uh, from YouTuber CS Guitars, who has a video that's about six minutes long of explaining why you need to connect your um, your valve amp or tube amp into a speaker cabinet. So please go and watch that as he is way better at technical talk than I am. I'm just going to tell you about this lovely little device. The Power Soak is a passive 100 watt power attenuator. So basically you can plug up to a 100 watt amp into this device and it'll handle it just fine. And what it'll allow you to do is to take your tube amp and crank the living crap out of those tubes, allowing you to push the natural saturation from the amp without blowing your ears out through the speaker cabinet. It has multiple impedant inputs, so you can do four, eight, and 16 ohm, depending on your amplifier. It has a dedicated line output with its own volume control, which is really nice. And it even has an emulated mic output, which mimics a microphone in front of a speaker cabinet. Also, I'm kind of dumb and forgot to record this, but on the front, you have the two volume controls, the load control, which is the big one that just, uh, tells you how much of the load is being attenuated, which just says how much of the uh, volume is being sent out the speaker output in the back. The other one is the volume control for the line out in the back. So sorry, I forgot to say that in my, the first part, but I just wanted to add this in here. The reason I wanted this is so that I could use my amplifier, which is a tube amp, and use it for my writing and making of music, because it's still really hard to simulate that exact amp as it's a very old and kind of rare amp that you're not going to find on most uh, you know, guitar amp simulators. So I wanted to make sure I could recreate that, plus I wanted to be able to use my guitar pedals. So enough of the talking, let's go over and I'm going to switch over to me being at my computer on my DAW Reaper where I recorded some audio tracks for you to listen to. Okay, so here we are in Reaper. Um, I did some recordings here. This set over here is recording of my pedal board with the demon pedal turned on. So this is distorted as all crazy. And then over here, I did some clean playing. Um, now this one I actually did using my ditto pedal, which is a looper pedal. So I was able to do an exact thing each time. This one over here, I, uh, <laughs> I, was, I just couldn't set up my uh, ditto pedal the way I wanted so I could use my foot to turn it on and off. So, un so I just kind of played. Um, as you can see, I actually got pretty darn close in playing almost the exact same thing each time. Um, for this test, it doesn't really matter. Um, because, let me get rid of that, <clears throat> because all you really need to do is hear tonal differences. Now, I will be straight up front with you guys. It was really hard to do this, because for this, the Bagheera, I have to use cabinet IR. Um, now, these are my IRs that I made myself with my cabinet, um, but um, it was really hard to recreate a lot of the effects when using my SM57 over here. That became a bit of a problem. Um, so you'll probably hear some tonal differences between the two. Um, the more important thing is hearing quality, um, you know, the, the, the tonal quality and stuff like that. So unfortunately, one of these is gonna be a little bit brighter. The SM57 is gonna be a bit brighter than the Bagheera. The Bagheera is just gonna naturally be deeper because I believe when I recorded this, 
I think this was using a different speaker, not different speaker, like it's a four by 12. And I couldn't remember which of the four speakers I used. I know I used the right side, but that still leaves two speakers. So it was a 50, 50 chance. So the tone's gonna be a little different, but all I really want you to hear is the difference between a live recording of it through the SM57, and then of course the Bagheera itself. So I just want you to hear that even though it's a little darker, uh, the clarity should still be there. The um, the recording quality should still be pretty good. So I, I hope this is good. If, if this is not good, let me know, and I will try my darndest to make a second video where I redo these tests and get as close as I can to getting them matched perfectly. So first, let's just listen to um, this top one here for you to listen to. So this is the SM57. Okay, and then we're going to swap over here. This is the Bagheera going into pul uh, in my impulse responses using, of course, the uh, Lancaster Audio Pulse, um, which I highly recommend this. If you want to get into doing things with uh, cabinet IRs and stuff like that, definitely recommend this. It's really good. So, like I said, it's going to be a little um, a little deeper, a little, little more bass is involved in this, So, uh, but still, listen to this. So yeah, um, like I said, it's a little bassier, um, a little bit, to me, it sounds a little bit more full, at least personally. Um, so I actually kind of prefer this. And I think what I could do with this top one is take my SM57 and it would take a lot of time, but I would just have to nudge it around a little off center towards like the edge, maybe in the center of the cone area. Um, I believe this is about center, maybe a hair off. So um, I'm de I definitely feel like I could probably do a lot better. If time was not, you know, if time was on my side, I would, I would uh, redo it all right now. But I really can't take the time because I have other projects I need to do. But if you would like to see me do this section again for the distortion, um, let me know in the comment section and I will do my best. So let's move on over here. We have the um, clean section where I just kind of pick a pattern from one of my band's songs. So uh, yeah, let's just go ahead and listen to this. So yeah, um, sounds good. Uh, the strings need to be replaced, obviously, but um, I have some new strings on the way. <laughs> but still sounds really good. Sounds, you know, pretty good. Um, again, it's a little brighter. Um, then we can switch over to here, which should have kind of a similar effect as the other one, where it's going to be a little bit, um, a little more bass is going to be involved and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, let's take a listen to this one. So yeah, um, I, again, I like I like both, honestly, um, but this one just has a little more fullness to me. Uh, and that's just a personal preference thing, the way I write music, the way I like the tones of my music. Obviously, I would EQ this if I was doing this for a song, because obviously I would have bass, I would have drums and stuff like that. Um, there might be vocals, so I would obviously tweak this a little bit to match better with um, 
if I was doing a full recording of like my band or something. But I just wanted you guys to kind of hear two samples. Um, one where I just use a regular SM57 um, and one where I use the Bagheera. <clears throat> now you might prefer one over the other in this photo. You might even prefer the SM57 for the distortion and the Bagheera for the clean, or you might like the clean with the SM57 and the distortion with the Bagheera, or you might like all SM57 or all Bagheera. That is a completely subjective thing. Um, I can't tell you which one to like. All I can tell you is what I like. I like the sound of the Bagheera. I think it's perfectly usable. And in, in, in fact, I do plan on using it because it allows me to use my actual crate Blue Voodoo in an environment where it's really hard to just crank the amp <laughs> in the room and uh, be able to control it really well and also not annoy anyone else in the area as well as my own hearing because I have to have the amp in my room. So unless I will, I'm willing to spend a lot of money on a uh, cabinet box to uh, dampen a lot of the sound that I'm going to be hearing or in the room, which I don't have that kind of money right now. But I don't know. I like the tone. Let me know what you guys think. And again, if you would like me to redo this test while trying to match as close to perfect as I can the SM57 to my impulses, please leave a comment below in the uh, in the comments. And I will do my best to remedy that. And I do apologize for not having the time to be able to do that perfectly this time. But I hope this at least kind of gives you an idea of what kind of sounds you're going to be looking at with the Bagheera. My final thoughts is I really enjoy this Bagheera power soak. It does exactly what I need it to do. And it sounds exactly like how I want it to sound. Now, obviously, like I stated in the little section there, if you would like to see me, again, ac more accurately try to recreate the sound of my cabinet IRs with a microphone in front of the speaker cabinet, I can take the time to try and do that uh, in a later video. I just didn't have the time to do it this time. So please let me know in the comment section below if you would like to see that video. Um, but yeah, this thing does exactly what I want. It sounds great to me, and that is a personal subjective thing. It is my personal... Uh, like of this thing that it sounds good. The price of this thing when I bought it was about $117, which is a pretty good price, although I have seen it sometimes go for lower at around 100 like just under $100. Um, but I think it's well worth the money as in order to get one of these things in a much higher end model, you could spend four or $500 to get the really high end models. So I think this is a really good uh, option for those of us who make home studios. So I definitely recommend you checking it out. Um, there will be a link down in the description to both an Amazon page as well as a Shopabunda page if you would like to make payments on it, um, which will help you with the costs as you can break that one payment up into four or 12 payments. Um, so definitely check that out. And I would like to thank Shopabunda again for sponsoring two videos. Uh, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you would like to see more of my content, please hit that subscribe button. And I love hearing any comments you guys have. If you've used this product, please let me know about your experience experiences. If you have any questions about it, please let me know. Um, but again, also check the link for the video to CS Guitars video as it is a really good video. I highly suggest you subscribe to him for a lot of great technical stuff. Uh, and yeah, thank you guys for watching this video. Leave some comments and I will see you guys in the next video. Later, everybody.